Good girl. Turn around again. Yes. Yeah, good girl. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. Hey everyone, Panos here from Nutris Pooch Dog Training. Today's talk is um, on one of the collars that I mainly use basically all the time. It's called a martingale collar or a half check. Others call it an obedience collar, many different names for it. And there's a couple of things that I want to talk about this and explain how we use it because it's important that we don't just buy the collar and we just put it on our dog and then there you go, it works, but it's the, the use and the application of it. So there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. Flat collars first, that will then help me explain what how then the martingale works. So the reason why I don't walk with flat collars on dogs for a couple of reasons. First of all, when a dog's on a flat collar, he's pulling and pulling and pulling. All that pressure sits in one spot on the dog's neck, which is normally the base of their neck. The lower their neck, the stronger it is, and the more they can pull against it, and they start to become desensitized and very resistant to the pressure, and they just don't feel the pressure anymore. And that's why we see our dogs walking down the street, <gasps> making that noise and choking themselves out. If it hurt the dogs, the dog would then, you would think that the dog would then stop pulling, but the truth is, dogs don't get hurt by it. They don't care, they, it's, they, it's their way of thinking that's how they're gonna get somewhere, so they continue to pull. Another problem with the collar sitting down low is that you haven't got control over his head. And if you can't control his head, then he's going to start looking in different directions. And especially if you're walking down the street and you've got dogs that are overexcited, reactive, aggressive, um, or just want to sniff something or want to eat something on the ground, it's really hard to get that control. Especially when he's looking that way and you're trying to pull him, he's still looking that direction where you don't want him to go. Another one last thing about the flat collar is that they can slip out very easily. And that also can be very undesirable since the point of having a dog on the collar is so that they can stay with us and not run away. So the martingale collar, now there's a few things that are really important about this. First of all, we must make sure that when you put the collar on, it always stays up high up on the neck, right up under the jaw and right behind the ears. And that's for two reasons. As soon as he pulls in front, he goes, well, that's uncomfortable when he pulls back on it. Also, because I've got that collar up high, I'm making sure that I've got control over his head. So if I'm walking down the street and the dog goes to sniff to eat that Kentucky Fried Chicken cooked bone, which isn't really bad for them, we can swing their head right up. Where if their collar's down low, they're gonna put all their pressure against it and they've eaten it. Or if you're walking down the street and they and your dog starts to stare at another dog, if you've got that collar up, you can swing their head around real easily. If you control the head, the body automatically follows. Second point about the martingale collar is that when you put the collar on, we must make sure the two side rings here do not touch. So when they don't touch, it evenly puts pressure around the whole neck, where if the rings are touching, 100% of the pressure is in one spot only, and that could be very undesirable because it's becoming a flat collar as well. Where if the two rings don't touch, it evenly puts pressure around. That way there, we don't have to put so much pressure on for the dog to start to feel the pressure, and they pull back off it. And that's when we start rewarding when they have a loose lead, and they're not putting any pressure on the collar. The only reason why there's a chain on this collar is that when I, make, when I pull it, and you can get nice and close to the phone, it makes that noise. And that noise associates that pressure's about to go on. And all the dogs that I work with, as soon as they hear that, the, breath, the chain make that noise, the dogs start to pull back and then I continue to pull more as well. So it's an indication that pressure's on. And one last thing about this martingale collar is that when we put it on, even if you had it on really loose, the dog still cannot get out of it. So not only is it a training collar, but it's also a safety collar. Um, as I said before, with the flat collars, they can back out of them very easily. Some sort of harnesses they can get out of as well. Where this is ensuring that a dog doesn't escape from us. There's no weak spot, there's no buckle. You have to physically put it over the dog's head. And that's why um, it's another chosen tool for us. Because we don't want to have a collar that has buckles on it. Because they can fail at the worst times. So, um, And I've never had a dog ever break a martingale collar in all the years of working with dogs. Um, unless they can break the chain, which is not realistic. So I'm now going to put it on honey and I want you guys to have a look. So we have Honey here from Southern Shire Council Animal Shelter. I'm using her as my demo dog today. Oh, hello, sweet thing. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to put the martingale on her. So she's already got one on, but I'm just gonna loosen that up so we have room for this one. So, some people are gonna struggle with putting a collar on a dog's head because they're, staying, they're, they're so excited, they're wiggling around. And it's very hard to get a collar on, as you can see with Honey, she's a little bit excited. So I'm gonna get my treats. Hello, yes, look what I've got here. So, got my high value treats in my hand here. I'm gonna grab the chain part of the, the collar. I'm gonna put my hand through the hole. I'm gonna show with the nose what I've got. And as she's trying to get the treat, I'm gonna to start to, yes. 
put this collar on. Let's get a little bit closer to the camera here. Yes. Yes. And over time, you'll, this technique is developed. So then, as soon as I put the collar in front of her, she shoves her own head through it. Yes. Just trying to make a positive experience with it, which is really important. Good girl. Good girl. Sit. So I want to do this this way so you can see what I'm doing. So when I tighten the collar, we must make sure the collar goes on nice and firm. To keep it nice and high, right up behind her ears, right up under her jawline. When I apply the pressure, as I was saying before, the two rings are not allowed to touch. This is really important. Always keep the chain behind the dog's ears. And then when I put the collar on, I'm going to show you now how we walk with it. So, let me grab that here. You ready for a walk, girl? Let's go. So as soon as she goes up in front of me, I'm going to change my direction. I can change again. Good. So this is one technique to slow the dog from pulling on the lead next to me. When she is next to me, yes, and I'm going to reward her. So I want to start encouraging her to be next to me. Better choke my food up. I'm going to get a better grip on this collar here. So she goes in front of me again, I'm going to change my direction. Yes, especially if she's looking at me, I'm going to reward her. Now I haven't had time to charge up the yes command because I've only known her for a very short time here. But normally, once we associate the word yes with food, then she'll be swinging her head towards me knowing that she's done the right thing. Good girl. Yes. And we reward. Good girl. Turn around again. Yes. Yeah, good girl. Perfect. Exactly what I want to see here. So you can see how the lead's always slack. I don't want it to be tight like that. That means that I'm going to be putting too much unnecessary pressure on her. You could also do as soon as she gets in front, just give a little check on the lead there. Nothing too dramatic. Enough to make it uncomfortable, not painful. This is really important. I want to stress that to everybody that I don't want you guys to go gun ho with your dog and start freaking out at her. This is all about associating positive experiences, yes, and then making it only uncomfortable for her to be in front of me. Yes. Every time she's looking at me, I'm going to reward her and give her a treat. You're a good girl. Sit. Good girl. Okay. Very good. As we walk up the path, as I said, just one more time to clarify, she goes up ahead of me. I'm going to change my direction. That's technique number one. Technique number two is applying a correction. But just a quick little check. Nothing too crazy, as I said before. If you are going to give the correction, one thing I want to stress is that if you're going to pull on the lead, pull across the body so it's hitting the sides of her neck where the muscle, strong part of her muscles are, you do not want to pull backwards where it's going to be um, putting pressure on her esophagus for obvious reasons. And as I said, it's only a flick. It's only a slight little check. I don't want you guys to do it as hard as you can because that's when it's going to be uncomfortable and very undesirable for our training. Again, just a little check. You can see how that was really effective. Now she's next to me. Yes. And I reward her. Change my direction. Hey, there you go, girl. Yes. And change the direction. Encourage her to be walking next to me. So, guys, my video skills. It's only me today. And I was really inspired to make this video. So, hopefully it's at a good angle and it's not too annoying to follow. And um, if there's any questions, put them in the comments section below. And... Um, yeah, enjoy enjoy training your dog. Go girl! You sweet thing. Yes you are. Yes you are. Good girl.